Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I am Angel, your host, and this is TFTC Reimagined Let's Play. And today will be something special because this is Battle 9 Mission 1 Reimagined, which will be released as part of the 1.3 patch. Uh, so I'm going to let the briefing play out and then we will have a good chat about uh, this mission. With the traitor Zarin and his fleets continuing to run rampant across the Empire, the Emperor has commanded Vice Admiral Thrawn to bring an end to this insurrection once and for all. To this end, he has given the Admiral a new base of operations over the planet Iriadu, the homeworld of the late Grand Moff Tarkin. From this base, Thrawn will command the entirety of the Seventh Fleet in its operations to hunt down Zarin's forces and eradicate them. Thrawn himself has personally requested your transfer to his command in light of your continued exemplary service to both him and your vital role in saving the Emperor in the recent battle over Coruscant. Your first task will be to help escort the Admiral in the Victory Class Star Destroyer Stalwart from Coruscant to his new command waiting in a nearby sector, the newly commissioned Imperial Two Class Star Destroyer Grey Wolf. The Grey Wolf is holding station along with several support ships and a fleet of convoy ships filled with supplies and personnel for the new base. Much of the 7th Fleet is already awaiting our arrival at Eriadu, so we should receive a warm welcome. You will be flying the TIE Defender designated Kappa-1 along with a single wingman. Though we don't expect any opposition along the way, Zarin still has huge numbers of TIE Advanced under his command and has been using them liberally to perform hidden runs on Imperial installations and ships, as well as scouting around for intel on our forces. The Admiral is trusting you to take care of any such threats. We know that Zarin still has several high-level spies within the Empire, which help give him critical intelligence on the disposition of the Empire's fleets and resources. In the coming weeks and months, the Order will be fully devoted to rooting these spies out so we can take this advantage away from him. Stay alert, be mindful, and serve the Emperor above all others. Okay, um, I'm going to talk over this bit that you can obviously play that to your heart's content when it comes out. Um, so yeah, there's a, this is basically a story mission, much like uh, Battle 6 Mission 4 Interlude uh, reimagined. This is a completely brand new, unique mission uh, and is basically setting the stage for Battle 9 and 10 and 11 as well, incidentally, because you, the player, will be based out of Eriadu for these, at least these three battles, uh, so you'll be coming back here quite often, um, and uh, I wanted to feel like there's this nice sense of continuity uh, from uh, where Thrawn's operations against Zarin will take place. So yes, I selected Eriadu uh, as the base after some consultation with some Star Wars nerds on this subject, uh, and it seemed like a, a good opportunity to bring a bit of lore into uh, into the mission. The fleet will jump directly to Eriadu, so the Admiral can officially take command. Being a story mission, that means uh, much like again Battle Six Mission Four, there won't be a huge amount of combat in this mission. It, it's all set up and story, and to begin with. We're at Coruscant, and you can see Coruscant looks a little bit different since we were last here. Uh, I've massively populated this with, uh, I think, with at least 30 Star Destroyers in the uh, the game here, um, as some Golden Stations as well as the uh, the Death Fleet. And so, yeah, just to make it uh, uh, reinforce the fact that uh, the Emperor has heavily reinforced Coruscant since the attempt uh, by Zarin to take over. But uh, yeah, as, as part of continuity, um, at least in Classic, um, well, <laughs> there wasn't too much continuity there, so to, so to speak, but uh, Thrawn spends his time on the Grey Wolf for most of the rest of uh, Battle 9 onwards. Uh, but I wanted to actually have this sense that, um, or a mission where we actually have, officially have him transfer from the Stalwart to the Grey Wolf. And so this mission does part of that. And so here we are, here's the Grey Wolf, here's a, a convoy of ships and some uh, support ships. And here's the Stalwart. And of course the Ludwig, which was present in Battle 3 and Battle 7. Continuing that uh, continuity that I'm trying to maintain throughout Reimagined, that uh, ships we've seen before will have a connection to uh, going forward. So that these two ships will still be present with us uh, all the way up to possibly Battle 13. I have yet to decide. Uh, their ultimate fates, uh, but uh, yes, 
Yeah, they'll be with us for quite a while, but ultimately Thrawn will be on the Grey Wolf here uh, for the remainder of the reimagined campaigns. They're coming in fast from several directions. Now, I wanted to have uh, some combat here, and I decided, uh, well, what if the enemy is trying to scout out Thrawn and his uh, assets? So that's what I went with. Um, I'm also trying to take more advantage of uh, what, because what I can do is basically have these uh, tie advance just go in a series of waypoints around the fleet as if they're inspecting the ships, then just bug out. However, what I found was that uh, it was quite easy for them just to be destroyed by capital guns and uh, enemy fighters. So, um, because the AI doesn't really. Well, it can't at all redirect power to its engines in order to uh, go about its business. I instead manually increase their speed to simulate the effect that they've redirected power to their engines. So in this case, these tie advance are going something like 180 MGLT, um, which means none of the regular fighters can keep up with them, and it's very hard for the capital guns to even hit them. But what can keep up with them is you and your tie defender. Now, in order to keep up them with yourself, you are yourself going to have to redirect power to your engines, and... Uh, Optimally, what you can do here is uh, redirect power from beam and shields to engines and just keep your lasers active because you're not really going to get engaged here. Uh, there's there's two elements uh, of uh, fail point here. Basically, if one of these scouts manages to survive and hyperspace back, it's a failure. But there's also two tie advance that will jump in a bit later and go for Thrawn's transport, uh, basically a, a moment of opportunity. That the, and these two will also have power redirected to their engines, but not quite as much. Something like 150, I think. Uh, just so it's, you know, seeming that they've put some power to their weapons and they're going to try and uh, kill Thrawn. So you, you do need to try and keep up and kill these things as quickly as possible, and they will bug out if they uh, have too much hull damage. And because of their speed, if they get too far away, if they're three, four kilometers away, it's going to be hard for you to actually catch them up. Unless you, you just go uh, balls to the wall, as it were, with your engines. And shooting missiles at them is not going to be very useful either, because they have chaff and will absorb the hits. So, yes. So, I, I think this makes this, uh, without being too combat intensive, it still makes it uh, an interesting mission. It makes it uh, tough as well. Uh, also, you might notice there, we've got a trinary star system. This is the first time I've actually used more than one sun uh, for uh, depicting a mission. Um, the uh, the lens flare effect, if you will, only works on one sun. I'm not sure I actually want it to be on three suns because, you know, lens flare is, you know, pretty hit or miss whether you like it or not. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought, you know, have some more suns. No, no other planetary bodies, this is a trinary star system, we're just waiting about. But there you go, that, that's it, that's the combat section of this mission done. Uh, and all the while, we wait for Thrawn to board the Grey Wolf. So here we'll just have a momentary lull, I think a minute or so. You can sort of inspect the fleet if you will, or just fly around and continue to patrol. I mean, it all depends on how long it takes for you to actually kill the scouts, but there's only a certain window for you to actually kill them before they hyperspace back anyway uh, from completing their waypoints. This is Vice Admiral Thrawn to all ships. I have now transferred my flag to the Grey Wolf. You may initiate your jumps to Ariadu base. Now, the voice actor for Thrawn uh, is the same guy we'd had it for uh, earlier missions and reimagined. However, I do actually have, hopefully, a, a new actor to replace all these lines. I was hoping it would be ready for uh, 1.3, but currently I still have yet to receive those lines. Uh, the reason for this is, um, at the end of this mission, Thrawn is actually going to be part of the debriefing. This is the first time I've had anyone other than the briefing officer and the Secret Order uh, guy do um, a voiceover debriefing. Now, the problem uh, with our current voice actor, which is UAL, uh, UAL, UAL um, is his microphone is basically a headset microphone, and it's not particularly high quality. Uh, it works fine for uh, mission radio, there's in-flight radio, it's perfectly fine for that sort of thing, but for the mission briefing quality, the, the, the lack of uh, clear quality is noticeable. And so, unfortunately, we, we need something else. Anyway, here we are, Eriadu Base. Uh, I have shown this uh, place off a few times in um, some of my live streams. But uh, yeah, this this is where the player would be based from. Got a few structures, we've got three platforms, uh, we've got a repair yard, and we have a Space Colony 1, Type 1, as the central command point for Thrawn. And we also have a bunch of destroyers and a few other support ships here as well. But yeah, just wanted to sell the fact that here we are, we're on a 
you're part of a big fleet, a big task force now, and uh, we are, our mission is clear. We have to find and defeat Zarin's forces. So, yeah. That is this mission in a nutshell. And this, uh, this will all set up and lead up into the rest of Battle 9, which will uh, sort of start to follow the familiar plot beats, well, for the most part, anyway, of um, uh, Battle 9 Classic, where we evacuate the Thai Defender plant and defend the Hashin, which is now an escort carrier instead of a, a corvette from pirates. To all personnel within the Seventh Fleet, this is Vice Admiral Thrawn. We have successfully arrived at Variadu base and I have formally taken command. We face a difficult task ahead, the destruction of the traitor Zari. But I have no doubt that we will be up to the task if you all perform your duties diligently and with efficiency. This will not be easy. The enemy has both the tactical and technological advantage over our forces. He has the freedom to strike when and where he pleases and he has the bulk of the Thai advanced fleet under his control. But I promise you, as I study and understand this man, this traitor to the Empire, he will not succeed. It's only a matter of time and patience. In the meantime, assignments will soon be forthcoming to all fleet personnel as we begin our operations. That is all. The Admiral wanted you to know what we will be up against so that you are under no illusions of the threat we face. We know that, according to our estimates since his coup attempt, Zarin has at least 15 Imperial class Star Destroyers, a dozen or so Victory class destroyers and interdictors, and upwards of 200 support ships, ranging from corvettes and frigates to light cruisers and carriers. Whilst this is only a fraction of the true strength of the Imperial Navy, the hundreds of Thai advanced craft in his possession and his mobility allows him to be a serious threat to the stability and security of the Empire as we witnessed with the attack in the Omar system. Our fleet cannot be everywhere at once, and to concentrate our forces in any one particular location leaves our other areas too vulnerable to attack. That's not even counting the continued threat of the rebels, who have a substantial fleet of their own that we must also contend with. In another recent development, Zarin has also managed to capture a Tycon class battle station. This huge mobile facility can house up to a dozen Imperial class Star Destroyers at any one time, so it will likely become the nerve center of his fleet's operations as it will be crucial for maintaining and repairing his fleet as his campaign continues. Perhaps the only bit of good news here is that Zarin despises the rebels just as much as we do, so there's little chance at least that the two sides will be working together. We have no doubt though that the rebels at least will probably make full use of the distraction that Zarin presents our forces to carry out further acts of terrorism. As we expected, Zarin knew of Thrawn's transfer to the Grey Wolf and his assignment to Ariadu. The timing of the enemy scouting party was so precise that it only proves the level of infiltration within the Empire that Zarin still enjoys. Given the size of Thrawn's fleet, we are certain that some of these spies will be among his personnel so that he can keep close tabs on the Admiral and what he's up to. We will speak again soon. Okay, that's uh, quite a long uh, bit of text. In fact, uh it's one of those things, I, I know we've uh, spoken before about uh, the inability for us to have the character interactions of the briefing officer of Secret Order like we did in uh, TIE Fighter, and this kind of reinforces that, because it's, it's a big wall of text, um, at least you can listen to the audio, but this is the only way I can kind of really convey the story in any detail outside of the in-flight engine, um, so... It's the best I can do, but hopefully it will at least give a lot of context for uh, what's going on, uh, the state of the Empire, the state of Zarin's coup, and what we're going to do going forward. So yeah, that is Battle 9, Mission 1, Reimagined. That will be released as part of the 1.3 patch. There will hopefully be one more mission I'm going to do as a let let's play on before basically that's it for a while. And uh, I don't know if that's going to be ready for 1.3, I'm trying, uh, but it will be basically all the way in Battle Zero, under the training stuff. It'll be a fifth mission there. Uh, I, If I can do it in time, then I will do a Let's Play of that. Otherwise, uh, if not, then this was the last one for the foreseeable future, at least for the next few months anyway, potentially. So yes, that, that was that. Do join me next time for hopefully when I do do that. Otherwise, uh, I am trying to do other Let's Plays. I've done Star Trek of Final Unity, uh, just completed that, and I'm thinking of doing DS9 Harbinger next as well. So until then, guys and girls, take care, 
and fly safe.